The purpose of this video is to review over how to determine left and right on some of the various vertebrae of the body and also how to differentiate the male from the female uh, skeletal hip area. As we look at the, uh, the pelvic area, the first thing we'll notice is this large hole here which is the um, acetabulum. And when we look at it, the pelvic bone itself is composed of three bones. All of the bones will meet within the acetabulum. So a good college question would always be to ask the various bones within this area. Now the top hip, which is where one um, presses, if they put their hands on their hip, that's going to be the ilium. And that's going to be this top area of the acetabulum. The front of the hip, this area right in here, this is going to be the pubic bone. Here we have our pubic symphysis, that is cartilage and that's going to be located on this section right along in here. The backbone, and the way you're going to tell the back is you're going to look for this ischial spine located right along here. That is the ischial bone. And then the ischial bone uh, meets right here in the bottom part of the acetabulum. When we're determining male from female on the pelvics, what we're looking at is this pelvic angle right here. And if that angle is greater than 90 degrees, we're going to have a female, which this one is. And if we switch right over here, you'll notice that it's less than 90 degrees, so we have a male. Now we can take that pubic bone right there, that pelvic bone, and we can look at it as a section or one side. And that's taking this side right here and looking at it. And that's where it's not attached to the uh, sacrum or to the other uh, pelvic bone. And again, the same thing we're going to do when we look at it is we find the acetabulum. This top area here is still the ilium. That's where you would put your hand. And then when we're trying to tell the... Um, the pubis from the ischium. Again, what I would strongly recommend that you do is that you spin this around, you look for that ischial spine, which is located right here, and that's going to indicate that this bone right here is the ischium, putting this bone right here as being the pubic bone. This is the pubic bone, this right here is a right side, this right here is where we would have our pubic symphysis, or this right here. So we were just touching this section of the bone. As we move on and we're looking at how to determine right and left from our various bones, right here we have our shoulder blade or our scapula. And what you have to do is you have to literally uh, either be, pick these up if your college professor will allow you, or at the least be able to pick it up within your mind and look at it. Now if we look at this bone right here, we know that this is the outer part. This is where the various uh, muscles would attach to it. And so we look at this. This would be the left side because this right here is where the humerus of the upper arm would attach. If we tried to make this our right one, our arm would hang down the middle of our back. Moving over to our humerus, we have it as this bone right here. And then again, what we need to do is we need to look at the humerus with regard to this section right in here. This is where the elbow would form, and so we have those there. And this deeper section right here is going to be the back of the arm because that's where the ulna notch is going to fit in. So if that's the back of the arm, and we turn this over, and we were to look at the bone, we set that down there, what we would notice is that this right here being the ball of, of the ball and socket joint, that would put this as being a left arm. Moving over to our, let's go on over to our femur bone. Our femur bone tends to curve upward, so we know that's the back section. There we go, right there. Got that set up right. So we have a slight curve that we can see right along in here. Uh, this being where our kneecap would be, we'd have our patella, and we would have our large tibia, and our smaller fibula that would attach there. So if we look at the ball and socket, again, this is a left. Uh, I randomly pull these bones out, so I randomly pulled out all left so far. And then we're going to move up to the tibia. Now to keep from confusing the tibia from the fibula, if you tell a little fib, you tell a little uh, fibula. So tibia is bigger, fibula smaller. And when we look at this one right here, again, we're going to see that curve up right along there. This right here is going to form part of our ankle. Now if we take this bone right here, and we move right back over to our skeleton that we had earlier, and if we look in the bottom part right there, what we'll notice is that bone forms this section right here, or our inner section of our ankle. So by looking at that, we look at this bone right here, 
we can tell that this is a right tibia. Other things that we would want to be aware of as we look at the skeleton is if we look at our radius here, our radius, the, the radius has a, kind of like a, a tip that looks like the head of a nail. And when we look at the ulna, the ulna is U-notched right along here. We can see that U-notch kind of spells out its name, so that's the ulna. Uh, continuing on here, we've got don't forget about our clavicle. Uh, don't forget about the sternum, where we have the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid process. When we look at these right here and we see our ribs, this is where the, we have the bone. And anytime you have a discoloration, that's showing you where it's not true bone, but it's cartilage. That is what allows uh, the sternum to be flexible when one does CPR. Um, that, I believe, will cover our various vertebrae of the body and our various skull and the skeletal system.